the filing status. And then if someone is married, now you have two people which could possibly be both age, uh, have the age factor met and the blindness factor met, right? So, so you can see the combinations that we have actually gets fairly complex because with a single filer, you have two added possible components, age and blindness that could have an impact on the standard deduction. And if married, you have two individuals, both of who, whom could have these two added conditions, you know, on each of them individual that could have an impact on the standard deduction for married filers. Okay, so don't check any boxes for your spouse if your filing status is head of household. So death of spouse in 2023. Uh, if your spouse was born before January 2nd, 1959, but you died in uh, 2023 before reaching age 65, don't check the box that says, quote, spouse was born before January 2nd, uh, 1959. So now we have this cutoff issue uh, in, the, in the event of a de death, which would hopefully be kind of a rare situation for that cutoff issue. A person is considered to reach age 65 on the day before the person's 65th birth date. Now, obviously, if you properly input this information into the tax return, if there was a death, for example, hopefully the tax return will help to do these cutoffs and these dates, but you want to be able to understand and interpret what the tax return is doing so you can explain it to a client and make sure the tax return is properly being populated. Example, your spouse was born on February 14th, uh, 1958 and died on February 13th, 2023. Your spouse is considered age 65 at the time of death. Check the appropriate box for your spouse. So that, so the, 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 if you check the box for 65 older, then you might have, again, a benefit from a tax perspective. So that you could so that you could possibly take a higher standard deduction. However, if your spouse died on February 12th, 2023, your spouse isn't considered age 65. So notice it's somewhat arbitrary. They have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> and so that you have that one day. Uh, and, so, and, so, and so your spouse isn't considered age 65. Don't check the box. Death of taxpayer in 2023. So if you are preparing a return for someone who died in 2023, see publication 501 before completing the standard deduction information. You can find that on the IRS website. And then we have blindness. So if you weren't totally blind as of December 31st, 2023, you must get a statement certified by your eye doctor or, or ophthalmologist. Okay, I can't say that word. The eye doctor. <laughs> or, or uh, that is because because now you have this situation where you might get a, a, an increase to your standard deduction, which would be a benefit if you're claiming blindness. And now, of course, you have to have the question of are you actually blind to the point of recognition that you that you should get the tax benefit of it. So you need some type of verification from that from, in essence, your eye doctor. So you can't uh, see better than 2200 in your better eye with glasses or contact lenses. So obviously we have two eyes and you know one eye could be better than the other eye. And so now you can get pretty technical in terms of what the condition would be uh, in order to be thought of as blind to get the higher standard deduction. Your field of vision is 20 degrees or less. 